tonight, France's religious freedom in question after it decides to ban a bias in educational settings. And UAE set to gain control of Liberia's dense forest in a carbon offset deal. We cover stories about the tragic death of a Muslim businessman in Owen Sound, the arrest of a Kazakh Muslim in East Turkestan, and Canada's attempt to correct historical wrongs. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Catherine Bullock. As the new school term approaches, France's education minister has declared that children will no longer be permitted to wear the abaya within state-operated schools. An abaya is a loose-fitting, full-length robe worn by some Muslim women. Education Minister Gabriel Attal told a media source that when students step into the class, they should not be identifiable by their religion on the basis of their appearance. This decision follows months of deliberation surrounding the presence of abayas within French educational institutions. The political right and far right advocate for the ban, while those on the left have raised concerns about potential human rights violations. In 2004, the nation enacted a ban on headscarves within school premises. Six years later, in 2010, the prohibition was extended to include full face veils in public spaces. There was a strong opposition by its Muslim community of 5 million individuals. Unlike headscarves, abayas had occupied a somewhat ambiguous position and had yet to encounter an outright prohibition until now. The French Council of Muslim Faith, a nationwide organization encompassing multiple Muslim associations, says that garments alone are not religious symbols. Liberia is facing controversy over a potential carbon offset agreement that could lead to a private Emirati company gaining control of 10% of the country's territory. This deal with Blue Carbon, a Dubai-based firm, would cede a million hectares of dense forest, extinguishing customary land rights and giving UAE pollution rights equal to the forest's carbon capture. The company would sell carbon credits to major polluters for emission offsets, supposedly achieved by restoring and protecting the land. The agreement, if signed, would breach Liberian laws and violate the land rights law of 2019. It would grant significant control over a densely forested area to blue carbon for 30 years, impacting Liberia's climate goals. The deal has been shrouded in secrecy. Local NGOs only learnt about it by obtaining secret documents. Critics emphasise that the agreement disregard local communities' rights, local community rights, and would prioritise the company profit over environmental and community concerns. The contract's terms appear to override Liberian land laws that mandate free, prior and informed consent negotiations with affected communities. Environmentalists raise concerns about the carbon market, pointing out that these kinds of deals may not contribute significantly to emissions reduction and could disproportionately impact poorer nations. The contract's terms and the company's lack of experience in carbon management are also under scrutiny. The local community in Owen Sound, Ontario, is reeling from the tragic death of a Muslim businessman from a severe assault outside his restaurant. 44-year-old Sharif Rahman died a week after he was assaulted outside the Curry House restaurant in Owen Sound. On the evening of August 17th, he was assaulted by three Caucasian men after a dispute over billing charges. Rahman suffered a brain injury and had been unresponsive in a London hospital before he died. A silent procession of hundreds of people marched through the downtown area to honour and remember Rahman, who had Bangladeshi roots. The attendees congregated at Owen Sound City Hall, holding candles, lanterns and the flag of Bangladesh, before walking quietly past Rahman's restaurant and the memorial of flowers and messages set up outside. Earlier, a police-led funeral procession took place with residents lining the route to pay their respects. A GoFundMe campaign established by a friend to assist Rahman's family has garnered over $215,000 in donations. Community members express their sorrow and support, describing Rahman as a warm and kind-hearted man. 
Despite the tragedy, residents say this event will foster community cohesion and strengthen ties. The police continue to investigate the, the assault and homicide, seeking assistance in locating three Caucasian male suspects involved in the incident. The police have, have provided descriptions of the suspects and the suspect vehicle, encouraging the public to come forward with any information. Authorities in East Turkestan, China, have arrested an ethnic Kazakh Muslim man for allegedly reciting verses from the Quran during a wedding and within private residences. This detention underscores a renewed crackdown on religious and ethnic minorities as part of China's Strike Hard campaign. Kusman Rahman, aged 56, from Xinjiang's Jimsa County, was arrested on July 14th. Chinese authorities also searched his home, reportedly discovering a copy of the Quran. Kusman has previously been in jail due to his religious beliefs. In 2017, China's communist regime imposed a ban on public Quran recitations in the region of East Turkestan, which it calls Xinjiang. The area is primarily inhabited by Muslim-majority ethnic Uyghurs and Kazakhs. The prohibition on, Quran, on Quran recitation coincides with China's mass detention of Uyghurs and other ethnic groups in, quote, re-education camps across East Turkestan. It is estimated that around 1 million Muslims, pre predominantly Uyghurs, are detained in these secretive facilities. They reportedly endure severe repression, including forced abortion, sterilization, birth control, rape, forced labor, torture, internment, indoctrination, and even killings. The Chinese authorities maintain that Quranic readings should solely occur under the guidance of government appointed imams. Private discussions of the holy text are forbidden. Normal, normal Islamic practices, including wearing beards and hijab and participating in Quran study groups, have also been curtailed under the pretext of combating so-called religious extremism. Kusman's arrest aligns with the government's sanitization campaign aimed at exerting Communist Party control over minority religious groups and stifling their religious practices. Stay tuned for more on the disturbing video of a Muslim student being slapped by his Hindu counterparts. In India, authorities are investigating a teacher who encouraged students to slap a classmate. The incident took place in the Muzaffarnagar district in northern Uttar Pradesh state and was captured on video. It has ignited widespread outrage across the world. The video depicts a seven-year-old Muslim boy standing frightened and crying in front of his peers as the teacher instructs them to slap him. The teacher directs them to hit him, quote, correctly. Amidst the distressing scene, a man's laughter accompanies the boy's cries. The superintendent of Police in Muzaffarnagar says the teacher instructed the students to hit the boy due to his alleged inability to recall his multiplication tables. The teacher blamed inattentive Muslim mothers for the poor academic performance of Muslim students. Legal action has been taken against the teacher. The school is currently closed. India is a nation with a population of 1.4 billion. It is the world's largest democracy. The incident occurred in Uttar Pradesh, India's largest state, with a population of approximately 200 million, around 20% are Muslim. The ruling Bharatiya Janati Party has faced criticism for its Hindu nationalist policies. Human rights advocates say these policies have deepened communal divisions and fostered an environment of fear and marginalization among minority groups. Several Superior Court justices in Canada may have attended Liberal Party fundraisers before their appointments. A joint investigation by the National Post and the Investigative Journalism Foundation reveals the names of appointed judges whose names are similar to those in fundraiser attendance records. For instance, someone named Michelle Bork from Calgary attended five Liberal Party fundraisers. A Michelle H. Brook was appointed in 2021 to Alberta's Court of King's Bench. These judges have not responded to the investigation's request for comments. 
This follows an earlier investigation that revealed that a higher number of Liberal Party donors since 2016 have become judges compared to Conservative donors. These investigations highlight concerns about political connections influencing judicial appointments. The federal judicial appointment process involves recommendations from judicial advisory committees and the Justice Minister. But the Prime Minister has the final say. A spokesperson for the Prime Minister's office says that the process is merit-based, denying the use of political party databases. Critics argue that such connections could undermine public confidence in judicial independence. The Canadian government has compensated Indigenous tribes in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan to correct historical wrongs. The Muscapatang Sotol Nation has received $150 million as compensation for 7,400 hectares of land seized in 1909. The seizure of the land was a breach of the 1874 treaty signed between the government and the nation. The nation is located in the, in the north of Saskatchewan with a population of about 1,600. It sued the government in the 1990s. Another 14 First Nations received $37 million. Crown Indigenous Relations Minister Gary Anandasangari says settling past injustices with First Nations is a top priority for Ottawa. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Sound Vision, which is a not-for-profit organisation. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.